video, you'll know how to make a drone all the way from scratch. So we're talking about this drone, which has a DIY flight controller here. So we'll learn about PCB designing, how to connect the circuit and what are the parts that are there in a drone. And uh, you'll, at the end, you'll calibrate all the sensors and fly it. So uh, before I get started, the firmware that is running on this drone is based off a core from Carbon Aeronautics and Juke Grouping. They are sort of the best creators in DIY drone space. I'll leave a link in the description, you can check them out. And before you begin with this project, just make sure that you're well versed with safety because this thing has a lot of destructive energy. So make sure that you keep this outdoors, tested outdoors, away from people. So with all that being said, let's get started with the project. Okay, so these are pretty much all the parts that you need. Uh, coming to the tools, uh, a multimeter is optional, it's only there to verify the circuit. Now coming to the important parts, this is an ESP32. The code is based on this flight controller, so make sure you get this one for my code to work. Uh, then here is an MPO6050. You can get two of these because sometimes they get damaged pretty easily. Uh, coming to the flight controller, you could go with a perforated approach or a printed approach. So if you're doing with a perforated board, you might need this, this and a bunch of wires. Make sure these are single strand wires. And these are a bunch of connectors which are required for both. Uh, you would need a bunch of male to female cables. These are necessary to connect the flight controller to your receiver. Uh, so coming to the transmitter and the receiver, you can take uh, something like this or uh, any transmitter uh, which has a PWM protocol should work. Uh, now coming to the drone, this one is an F450 frame. Uh, here, the top right uh, motor is anti-clockwise and the opposite one will also be anti-clockwise. This is clockwise, this is clockwise. This is motor number one, two, three, and four. Uh, this is a battery. Make sure it's rated 35 C and above. Uh, you can go for a 2200 mAh battery or anything above that. This one's 5200. And make sure you place it in the center of the drone so that the center of mass is at center. Uh, below, you have four ESCs. Uh, they are connected to the power distribution board, as you can see here. And this is an XT60 connector for the battery. So this is pretty much it. The red is the front of the drone. And this is all you need. Okay, so I want you guys to head to Easy EDA where you can design your PCB. So first we start with the schematic and we bring all the components. So this is an ESP32 which is found in the library uh, of, of this Easy EDA tool. So similarly, we're going to need the MPO6050 here. And the next thing we need the ESC. So here I designed a rail uh, which consists of like four pins. I couldn't find a three pin uh, foot pin. So it's nevertheless the same. So we need four of those because there are four motors. And uh, the next thing is the radio receiver. So radio receiver includes a power source, so a plus four, five volt and ground, and then all the six channels. Now uh, we begin with the connections. So we have to do the wiring. These are the bare minimum uh, connections you need to get on your flight controller for it to work. So one thing important about this flight controller is that it is powered by the battery eliminator circuit of the motor ESC. So we are going to take the motor once ESC and we are, we are going to connect it to VN. Uh, similarly, I'm just going to run through all the connections. So um, this is pretty much simple stuff. Uh, you can just pause it and watch it. Uh, here you can also see that the voltage of ESC1 is only connected to the VN because that will be supplying the power source and rest of them are just common grounds. Um, then uh, comes the part where now this is our basic flight controller and now if you want to upgrade it like put more sensors such as a compass barometer uh, or even a GPS you need other sensors so I've added an I2C uh, rail, like four rails. And uh, these are basically for additional features. Uh, one more thing is that if you plan to add on a GPS, you would need a TX and RX pin. So I've also added a uh, component which has, which is connected to pin 16 and 17 of the ESP32. So this is again optional. Now, if you're making a perforated board, it's up to you because doing all this is a lot of mess. 
so you can just stick with the most basic circuit as shown earlier i've also added an led just for more indication purpose you can also use the built-in led and skip this connection so now that your circuit is complete you need to verify if everything is all right so all the connections you made are pretty okay so you have to go to check nets so here you'll it will just show you what is left open-ended so you can just go through one by one see if everything is all right then it will show you the paths so like paths of each wire like what is what is it connected to so uh, i'm checking here like if what is connected so it seems all right to me and everything is good so you just have to see if there are not any open-ended cables or if something is not connected so once this uh, is done you are ready to make it into a pcb so yeah you can generate a pcb and i like to keep my pcb in a rectangular shape so i'm going with these dimensions it's up to you however you want it and um, you can start it at the no region or something so here you place your components as your requirements this is a very basic thing and you can do an auto design route where you select the width of the wire once this is done it will wire all your components together in a proper pcb manner now uh, i took some time to modify it like add more names to it put the holes at each corner and uh, after doing this I, if you check the 3d model uh, just to verify things it looks pretty all right uh, i've added four holes again and um, yeah this is how it looks and then you can just verify the circuit again to generate the garbo file so here you check for the routing if routing is okay so since there are zero errors you can generate the garbo file Once your Gubble file is generated, you can get it printed from any PCB service provider. This brings us to the sponsor of this video that is JLC PCB. They provide easy, affordable and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions empowering engineers like you and me to develop projects very efficiently. The process is really easy. You just have to upload your Gubble file on JLC PCB. They'll give an instant quote and you can order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. They also offer full service manufacturing solution. What I mean by th this is that you get PCB customization, you can do component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, all in one place with high precision assembly. Every step is also trackable, that is all the way from your production approval to your dispatch to your delivery. It's very affordable to make. You can get one to eight layer of PCBs just for $2 because they have an efficient large scale production, which reduces cost and brings you really affordable prices. They are reliable to trust because they have an all in-house production unit, which ensure quality stability and strict quality control in every process. They also have a rapid turnaround because I got this PCB in a really short amount of time. Uh, also, don't miss out on JLC PCB 6 layer PCB special offer where you can get $30 off coupon and enjoy top quality 6 layer PCBs for just $5. You can also get a 2U ENIG finish and no engineering services for the via impact. Thank you for sponsoring this video, JLC PCB. If you want to get your flight controller printed from JLC PCB, you just have to go down on below link and there you have it.
once your flight controller is all done you need to put it on your drone and here i have placed it with some double sided tapes and two zip ties uh, here this cable is something that you should not do if you are printing the same gubber file from the description because i had made an error in the gubber file which i rectified so uh, this is basically just connecting ground of all the ESCs to the entire circuit uh, that is done you connect your receiver to all the channels and starting from channel 1 here all the way to channel 6 and the power and now you're done with the basic circuit now you need to test if all the components work together to work fine so you need to test the IMU then you need to test the receiver and then you need to do the calibration of all the four motors so it starts at the same time so here are the files for it so in the in this repository in the test folder you can check angles so you just have to upload here and check angles and then you have to check if the receiver works all right make sure you do this step just to verify that everything is okay and then you can start flying so here in this step i'm just going to show the calibration part because i think you can handle all these other files so there is one issue here this cable gives the common ground and the power so you need to disconnect the motor number one every time you upload any code uh, it's just better that way First turn on your receiver and make sure the throttle is at full then connect the ESC1 pin and give power to the drone. After a few beeps make this go down. So now all your motors are calibrated at once that means they'll start once when you increase the throttle. Now that your calibration is all done, you need to go to the SRC folder and we will now do the gyro calibration. So open the gyro calibration code and just upload this code. Uh, just press the enable button once. You will see that it says to place a quad copter on a flat surface and place press. So make sure your quad copter is on a level surface. So this is a spirit level surface. And then you just have to press press space and enter so now it is doing the calibration it is advisable to not move the drone at this moment and it's going to output some values that we are going to put in the main code so these are the values these are offsets and you just need to copy these and then you have to go to the main code that is your angle mode uh, flight controller version 3.1 and you have to upload this in the void setup Yeah, so our values are all, all, all the way calibrated values are put in and that means this code is fine and uh, now you just need to upload this final code okay so now your flight controller code is in the ESP32 everything should be fine so after doing the test codes if you want to verify again so here are some bunch of comments which you can uncomment to see the values so these are receiver values and then these are the gyro values so you can uh, and these are the angle values you can uncomment this print them see what you uh, see what's up and uh, just for for assurance basis before you fly make sure everything is proper so this is anti clockwise and this is also anti clockwise this is clockwise this is clockwise this pin is connected to pin number uh, what the motor pin 1 and similarly for this 1 2 3 4 make sure these connections are all right and uh, make sure everything is intact like the battery is fixed properly, your flight controller is properly, IMU is fixed properly. Just make sure all this is intact and then you're good to go for a flight. Now let's go outside and fly this drone. Yeah. Yeah. You can take the drone now. I hope with this. <laughs> Why? <laughs> to spy on people. <laughs> ah, but it doesn't have a camera. No, ah, no, okay, okay, it doesn't make sense. 
Is it hard to control it? No, th this is this one's. It's gotten easier, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, damn, <laughs> bro, watch out. <laughs> 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 Almost the crush now. <laughs> 